So yesterday I was co-facilitating a team building session, kind of like a holiday themed party with over 160 participants with my friend Lewis, who was the main host. He was the creator of the experience and I was there to support him, take care of some facilitation, take care of the Zoom, uh, putting people in breakout rooms, uh, helping people with tech issues. And there's a few things that I've learned that I would love to share with you today. So first of all, my name is Jan Keck. Uh, I'm the creator of Ask Deep Questions, which started out as this deck of cards to help people get from small talk to deep, meaningful conversations. And this year I've been dedicating my life to really help others create really engaging experiences virtually where they connect their participants with each other. And my friend Louis Serrano from Fundamentals of Play, he's the chief fun officer, um, a title that he gave him himself. And uh, he creates these wonderful play shops where we have worked with like a bunch of different companies, having them play different games, learn about empathy, learn about emotional intelligence, learn about building trust, communication, all the things that really make up a strong, high performing team. And yesterday we did this, um, this team building session and it was the biggest yet with, like I said, 168 um people and i've learned a few things from just like watching what happens when you have that many people so i wanted to share those with you today the first thing i wanted to share is that when you're facilitating or tech hosting a session with that many people it literally feels like you're uh in this like uh, you have all these switchboards and sw uh, things that you need to take care of and there's so many screens like we had four screens of people filling up my my laptop then I had two other screens next to me I definitely felt like the people in this in this picture here um, but the first thing that I noticed was everything just took so much longer I would say that I always recommend zoom is perfect if you up if you have up to 100 people and that's kind of the limit that you get with most of the kind of lower plans if you want more than 100 people or participants you have to upgrade your plan so um, i realized that zoom was struggling a little bit like it was taking longer if i wanted to rename people i would click the rename button and then i would have to wait a couple of seconds before it pops up um, same thing when you're trying to find someone or spotlight someone Man, there's so many pages of people, it's really hard to, especially if you're trying to find one specific person. And I'll tell you in a moment what the trick was that we uh, incorporated that helped us find people when they wanted to share something. But yes, everything was slower, especially when it came to creating breakout rooms. And breakout rooms is my favorite feature when it comes to using Zoom and helping people connect with each other but if you have that large of a group, it also can be a little bit more challenging. As you can imagine, creating breakout rooms for a group of 30 or 40 is different than a group of 200. So what happened was number one, most of our group activities were groups of three, four or five people. And uh, if you let Zoom automatically decide to create the rooms, that's awesome, but it will always put the other host or the other people from our team in the breakout room right away. And usually my kind of go-to tip was adding an emoji at the front of their name so I can find them really quickly in the list as I'm going through. And uh, this is kind of what that list looks like. Um, so you have all the breakout rooms before you open them that are created and you see people's names in there. And all I need to do is find the one person that is part of my team that I want to keep in the main room so we can debrief while everybody is doing the activity. And if I just click on the top here, um, I can just uncheck them and they will stay in the main room with me. But the problem is when you create, I think more than 30 rooms, they will start to collapse. So uh, I don't actually know if you can see this. Let me see if I can uh, move my mouse over there but you see that little arrow over here this is usually 
where you can open and close, it will collapse. The breakout room will just say breakout room one, breakout room two. When you click it, it will show the people in it. And it will show maybe 20 to 30 breakout rooms open. And then the last ones are all closed. So for me, as I was going through it, I had to literally click each one of those buttons to open them up until I find the other co-host, the main host, and take them out of the breakout rooms. And that just took a lot longer than it usually does with a smaller group. So that was the first thing that I noticed. Um, the other thing that I noticed when it came to, to uh, breakout rooms is you have to have very clear instructions. And I think that's, that's a big one in general. Um, but if you click the little gear icon on the bottom, you get all these different settings. And if you read the second one right here, um, allow participants to return to the main session at any time. So some of the activities that we played were about which team comes back the fastest. So we give them an activity. Once they solve it, once the whole team is through, they all click leave breakout room on the bottom. They come back to the main room and then we can continue. We can see uh, who is back first and we gave them a virtual trophy, added that as an emoji in front of their name which again, took a lot longer because things were slow. But uh, the second time we sent them to a breakout room where the active was not about speed, they actually still came back early and surprised me when I was just taking a quick snack and buy, uh, a drink. And suddenly there were, I don't know, 50 people that came back five minutes, almost five minutes early from a breakout room and I needed to get creative and entertain them or give them something to do so that's where um, having some good debrief questions handy, uh, where I simply just ask, okay, everyone just go to the chat and share something that you learned in the breakout room or something that you've noticed. And that way I could keep everyone engaged until Louis, who was actually checking in and some of the breakout rooms who was not back yet. Uh, so I had to like buy this, this couple of minutes of time until he can continue the, the session. So that was kind of a way how we, how we solved it. Um, but talking again about clear instructions, this is important with small groups. And I stress this all the time when we're running breakout room activities, but it's so much more important with larger groups because we could have simply said, this activity is not about speed. So take your time, fill the whole kind of time that you have allotted, check the countdown timer on the top. And when the time runs out, then we'll bring you back. And the other thing we could have done and we did in the next round is let me go back to those um, to those settings we're going back hey where is my mouse okay uh, let's go back there we go to those settings where are they these ones so we could have simply unchecked that box and don't allow participants to come back to the main room which we did but then the problem was people wanted to go back to the main room and by accident clicked leave meeting and then they all popped up back in the waiting room and we had to let them back in so not ideal that's why having very clear instructions is so important and one of the things i always do and uh, it's great to have prepared in advance is have your instructions for the breakout room activities written ahead of time so you simply can copy them paste them in the chat, which is visible in the breakout rooms. And something like this, what I have right here is, is really useful. So again, even if you forget to mention something, it's written there in the chat. And ideally you say it and you uh, have people read it again. That way you can make sure that it all goes well. So um, one last tip that I wanted to share, especially when you have such a large group and you want to find some people to share something, like unmute themselves and share. If somebody posts in the chat, I want to share, it's almost impossible to look for their name in like the four pages of Zoom with like that many little thumbnails and find them. So what we ended up doing is we just asked them to click the participant panel at the bottom and click the raise hand button. Because what happens if somebody clicks the raise hand button is two things. Number one is they go to the top of the list in the participants panel. So very easy to see who was first. Number two, in gallery view, their thumbnail moves up to the top left. 
So that way we can see who is still waiting and it's very easy to then on the top left go and click spotlight that person, make them, uh, like give them permission to unmute themselves and then share for the whole group. So that helped the process a lot because otherwise it would have been insane chaos. Um, so keep that in mind next time you facilitate with a large group. Um, now, I am super curious if anybody's watching this live right now on Facebook or if you're watching the replay on YouTube, please let me know in the comments. Uh, are there any questions that you have about facilitating Zoom experiences that are engaging, that are memorable, that's, that are transformational with these large groups? Or do you have any tips that you can share, things that you've learned because you've facilitated with groups that size already? Let me know in the comments below. And um, if you're interested in just learning a little bit more on kind of the different techniques, but also strategies that you can use to engage people, make sure that they have their cameras turned on and they're not just these black little squares where you're not even sure if somebody's still sitting in front of the computer, then um, I invite you to check out my virtual facilitator training. I've just completed the second cohort with a group of amazing facilitators that are going to go out and apply all the lessons. Actually, some of them have already applied the lessons and gotten some great results with people saying this was the best Zoom meeting I've ever attended. And oh my God, I totally forgot that I'm looking at a screen. Those are the things that their participants are telling them. And uh, these are some of the lessons that we are going to cover. It's actually a five week training. So the magical human moments is the session that we just completed this week. And the next cohort is going to start in the end of January, beginning of February. I'm going to put the link in the comments for anyone who wants to check this out. And um, yeah, I would love, I would love, love, love if you either watch some more of my YouTube videos, which you can see in a, in a moment, take my training, do something to help participants feel less alone because the truth is this year has been challenging. It is 2020. There's a lot going on and um, the more we can help people connect in the experience that we create in the workshops that we run, the more my impact of helping fe people feel less alone is going to be much bigger if we work together, if we collaborate, if we can share tips like the ones today. Um, so if you have any thoughts, comments, suggestions, share them below. And uh, I do see that um, I just got a comment from Kyle here, who is asking me how I do the overlay slides on top of my video, which will be another workshop I am hosting in January as well. So if you want to, uh, yeah, get updates on that, also leave a comment below. I am using a software called Ecamm and I'm using Keynote, and then I have a little device called a Stream Deck. Whoa, hold on, let me pull that out of here. Um, that has all these fun buttons that I can press to go back to my slides and these fun little overlays, although this one doesn't really fit on the screen as much. So um, yes, I'll be sharing all of those tips in a separate workshop, so if you're interested in that, in the virtual facilitator training, uh, in anything else that I do, check out some of my other videos and click the link in the description that I'll post right after we're done here. Okay, have a wonderful rest of your day and um, let me run one quick thing. Uh, let me find another overlay <laughs> in my Ecamm software because this is also streamed on YouTube and I would love if you subscribed, if you got any value from this. So. See you soon.